Hello everyone, my name is Madan, Madan Mohan Rao from Your Story and on behalf of all of us at Your Story, welcome to our deep dive today into iCreate's mission of driving India into a greener future. We have with us Mr. Anupam Jarote, CEO of iCreate, but before I introduce him and the rest of our panelists, let me set the context just a little bit. iCreate is the International Center for Entrepreneurship and Technology. It is an incubator working in the direction of supporting the new and emerging startups. With a proven track record of transforming tech innovations into successful business models, iCreate recently concluded Evangelize 2021, a super successful EV innovation challenge. The event witnessed the participation of emerging startups in the EV space from across the country. The organization aims to encourage and support young entrepreneurs innovating across domains, in this case, especially the EV domain. Joining us in this panel are some of the young and enthusiastic founders from the EV ecosystem who were also the winners of the Evangelize 2021 competition. Please join me in welcoming Akash Gupta, co-founder and CEO of Clean Electric, a battery management technology solutions provider. Welcome aboard, Akash. Also with us is Varun Rajamane, co-founder and CEO of Grimot Mobility, an EV powertrain solutions company. Welcome aboard, Varun. Thank you, Madhav. Thank you. Glad Thank to be here. And with us also is Manuj Agrawal, co-founder and CEO of Weber Electrocorp, an integrated full-stack EV train drive, drive train company. Welcome aboard, Manuj. Hello, Manuj. Thank you. Very warm welcome to all of you. And also with us today is Mr. Anupam Jalote, CEO of iCreate. Welcome aboard, Anupam. Thanks for having me here, Madan. So, Anupam, let's begin by talking about the iCreate story. You have been providing incubation support to innovative startups in the country. Can you tell us a bit about the broader objective of this organization and what it is that you're aiming to achieve? Anupam? Yeah, a great question. Uh, so I create, it's very easy to confuse it as just another incubator. Uh, but there are some things that make it stand out. A, it's a public-private partnership between the government and industry. Industry represented by chairman like... Uh, Mr. Dilip Shangvi, the current chairman, or Mr. Narayan Murthy, the founding chairman. Also, this is a dream, dream project of the prime minister of the country. Um, so that kind of sets the context that this is an institution that is supposed to make an impact to industry as well as the people of the country using tech innovation. And therefore, our one line mission statement is helping tech innovators become successful entrepreneurs. So guiding tech innovation to success. Um, so therefore, one part of what we do is your standard incubation. We're omnivorous. We take all sorts of innovative projects, support them to commercial success. But we are product focused. So we are one of those very few in the country which are focused on physical as well as digital products rather than pure service. So we've got a very, very strong uh, foundation of embedded systems, IoT, uh, data analytics, ML, uh, that's the kind of projects that we, we pursue. Um, the other bit is something that I call strategic innovation. Can you consciously seek out innovation that solves core problems of the country? And um, that led us to focusing on a clean tech and specifically EVs at this point in time. And then we'll move more into clean tech later and uh, FinTech uh, later. So that's a little bit about iCreate. We are on a 40 acre world-class campus just outside of Ahmedabad. It's a beautiful place. You must come and visit us. You'll love it here. And it buzzes because we've got labs, we've got hostels, we've got mentors, guides. So this place buzzes with energy. Thanks so much, Anupam. You just mentioned EVs a while ago. So given that EVs are a huge focus at iCreate, what is your outlook for the EV industry in India? For example, what are some of the key opportunities and challenges that you as an institute are looking to address, Anupam? Hmm. So it doesn't need uh, me to, to inform you that EVs are rocking in the country. Uh, there's more demand than, than supply. People have realized that EVs are a good uh, thing to start cutting into their lives. At iCreate, our focus is very, very simple. Uh, we want to focus on what we call SET, small electric transport, which means two wheelers, three wheelers, or small four wheelers, small. So your motor capacity would be five kilowatt hour ambient or 10 kilowatt peak. Um, India is the largest manufacturer and exporter of normal two vehicles. Uh, between Hero and Bajaj, we're the largest manufacturers and exporters. 
what will it take for us to become number one in EVs, small EVs, right? That is strategic innovation. That's what drives us at iCreate. Number one, every electric vehicle needs to have a motor. Motors need magnets. To give power to the magnet, you need a rare earth element called neodymium. Most of it comes from China. So like it or not, you're locked into China as a supplier of your motors. So therefore, we're pursuing a very specific program to create powertrains, motors and controllers that don't use magnets. Now, the other bit, the other big picture bit is, what do we need to do to increase the efficiency of small electric vehicles by up to 25%? So we focus on subcomponents, the motors and the controllers, which uh, Manoj is already into, uh, batteries and battery management systems, and Varun has a very interesting motor story of his own. Manoj does both. And Akash uh, does the other bit, which is uh, fast charging batteries. So our focus is create a big supply line of innovators and small and large medium businesses that are making the components so that India becomes the knowledge leader and knowledge exporter rather than knowledge importer. So our mission statement is to create a platform, open standard platform, so that anybody can jump, jump onto it. You make motors, I make battery management system, I make warning, wiring harnesses. Everything's got to be waterproof, right? So we put all of that together in an open source platform and take India to global leadership in small electric vehicles. Thanks, Anupam. That's a very compelling vision and mission indeed. Now let's hear about uh, our startups in the audience now. Uh, I'd like to ask um, Akash, Varun and Manoj a little bit about their company and what kind of impact they're looking to make in the EV system. Let's start off with you now, Akash. Tell us a little bit about your company and how you hope to change the whole EV ecosystem. Go ahead. Uh, thanks, Madan. Uh, a pleasure being here on your story. And uh, so uh, our company is more focused towards uh, energy storage technology innovation. And uh, uh, when we talk about electric vehicles, we are having electric vehicles which are three, four times more efficient because of a highly efficient motor we have in the powertrain. But if we are looking at the energy storage space, which is basically the fuel in the vehicle, uh, it's still an inconvenient experience these days. You have to wait four hours to get your vehicle charged, and then you have an issue of uh, degradation, and you don't know in two years' time your battery is uh, uh, running out of juice, and you need a battery replacement, which costs around 40-50% uh, of the overall vehicle cost. And then we are every other week we are seeing fires in the battery packs in the two wheeler space, and which is not heartening to see, and which leads to catastrophic failures. So these are some of the key challenges which Clean Electric is trying to address uh, with our proprietary uh, technology. It's based on a novel method, which is uh, immersion cooling, and uh, we are able to uh, fast charge the battery packs in less than an hour and uh, we are able to get a 10 year battery life out of a battery pack. And uh, because it is uh, submerged in a non-flammable liquid, it uh, does not catch fire. So these are the three key problems which we are trying to address with our technology. And we are commercializing our one hour technology, which is four times faster than what uh, current uh, EV industry is at. And we are building uh, and fine tuning the 10 minute charging technology which is going to change the overall EV experience and will help India to transition to an all-electric future. Uh, that is what we are doing at Clean Electric. That's a great story. Thanks, Akash. How about you, Manoj? In your case, what's your startup up to and what do you plan to achieve? So at Webber, we are building a full stack, stack integrated drivetrain, which has battery management system, uh, motor controller, and a battery charger all integrated, uh, talking to each other and working together as a whole unit. So right now, uh, Weber has taken a, such a holistic approach of this whole ecosystem building of everything electrical of an electric vehicle. So our proposition is that uh, we help battery pack and EV OEMs uh, to scale up very rapidly in terms of uh, lead time of a product development. We bring our unique electrical and uh, software engineering skills. We partner with them with their mechanical integration skills and help them uh, deliver great EVs uh, very quickly uh, and very reliably. So uh, right now, complete electrical ecosystem in India for EVs is completely dependent on China. 
So once you get a component, uh, once you purchase a component, be it battery management system, motor controller, or a charger from China, there is no custodian or even a caretaker in India sitting right now of that Chinese company, which we can even interact to for any problem solving or any integration problem that any EV manufacturer would face. So we sit here right now in India uh, with a hardware and software developed right from scratch in all the EV subsystems and all talking to each other, build together as a whole. And then uh, we're able to help EV and battery pack manufacturers a lot. Yeah. Thanks, Manish. And how about you, Varun? What is your story and what are you planning to achieve in your space, Varun? Um, so yeah, Gramot's a two-year-old company. Uh, we started off, you know, initially with a few import substitution products. Uh, but before that, I have a story of my own. I'm a passionate cyclist. Um, like I've been, I live and you know, the weather's good. So I typically like my entire school life, I cycle to uh, school and then like anywhere I had to meet friends, I cycled. So I personally believe that this last mile, uh, you know, from your metro to connecting to your uh, office or home, like you can fulfill it by small vehicles, you know, like bicycles or rickshaws, whatever it may be. Uh, that's why at Gramot, like we are focusing on small vehicles. So we focus on low voltage powertrains, motors and motor controllers. Uh, the more primary sector we cater to is the bicycle and the e-rickshaw and two-wheeler market. Um, so that, that's what we do. And we have some particular innovations which we have done in each of these uh, spaces where we have reduced the magnet content and increased the overall efficiency of these motors uh, to give more value for money. Uh, which is what is important in the Indian context. And that's what we're achieving, uh, plan, to, uh, plan to achieve in Grama. Thanks, Varun, Akash, Manoj, for setting the stage with what your startups are doing. I've got a few questions specific to each one of you now. I'm going to start off with Akash. Akash, you operate in this space of battery technology. Can you elaborate a bit on some of the technology that you're using? What are some of the challenges you face and how you expect to overcome these challenges? Akash? Yes. So, uh... Battery technology is something which the entire world is trying to push the envelope forward and is what is limiting the complete electrification globally. Right now, we are sitting at less than 2% EV sales globally as well as in India. So uh, people are trying to make it safe. People are trying to make it long lasting. People are trying to, uh, uh, to make it fast charge so that you get a similar refueling experience with that of ice refueling in five, 10 minutes, and then you are ready to go for, for your uh, own needs. So, uh, but if you will see that people are trying to uh, do a lot of uh, research to uh, on the cell level to get the overall performance. And uh, uh, it, take, it has took, take, took on three decades for the lithium ion to pass through this industrialization phase and right now we are seeing the cost uh, which makes sense for, for EVs to sell. So what we are trying to do at Clean Electric, we are trying to use this affordable lithium ion cells uh, which are uh, like nickel based or iron based cells which are very cost effective and we are trying to uh, push the performance and the safety to a level so that it, uh, it is acceptable for the Indian market. So lithium ion cell is an electrochemical process of energy conversion. So uh, there is a lot of things which we can play around outside the cells and uh, uh, in terms of the physics of the cell at what temperature it needs to be operate and all those innovations. So that is what we are doing. We have, we have a patented technology, which is the uh, immersion cooling in which we have seven to 10 times more contact area than a conventional liquid cooling, what Tesla and Rivians of the world do. So uh, that allows us to fast charge the battery pack without degrading the battery life. So that is the combination which we are trying to break and we are challenging some of the conventional wisdom in this space which has been existed. And with our proprietary solution, we are trying to make it as convenient as uh, internal combustion engine vehicles and uh, without disrupting what is inside the cell, just using the affordable cells and pushing the performance uh, by a magnitude of four or eight times. And uh, we have got some success uh, in this and we had uh, validated our one hour technology. Uh, and right now we are uh, using the same basic technology to get to a 10 minute charging thing. And uh, we believe by the end of this year, we'll be having a 10 minute battery, which gives you 2,500 cycle life 
and india will be the first country to achieve such uh, astonishing target in the energy storage space right now israel us and europe has been leading the innovation in this space and we want to put india into the forefront of energy storage technology innovation uh, just to be in a lead runner as mr anupam has set the vision and mission for i create and for the country thanks akash it's great to hear that you also fight for a patent coming back to anupam now anupam we heard a lot about this evangelize incubation program of yours can you tell us a bit more about uh, the idea behind this uh, incubation program who are some of the key stakeholders involved and what is the overall objective of this uh, innovation incubation program anupam i'll treat, take it in the reverse order the overall objective so this is a 3 to 5 year journey for i create um we want to do multiple things number 1 uh focusing on sub components not the whole vehicle right whole vehicle is a very complicated uh, thing and needs marketing distribution money but the sub components are the heart of it so that's a very clear focus uh new technology pushing the frontiers the pushing the envelope on tech development and therefore patents are important technology which is slightly over the horizon which has not yet come in but is needed is important a global market whatever you are doing should not only be for for india right so those are some of the founding tenets of this multi year program uh, so once we focus on uh, the sub components and essentially it's just two main sub components your powertrain which is basically your replica of the engine right the motor and the accelerator the controller that will control the motor the second bit is your petrol tank which is the battery and the computers that control the battery the battery management system now you are wasting a lot of energy every time you break the vehicle uh, expensive cars 30 40 lakh rupee cars have regenerative braking so when you break that energy goes back into your battery we want to put it into small low end two wheelers also the same technology right and finally interlink all of them so that efficiencies are unlocked so your motor and your battery and your charger and your charging systems all talk to each other intelligently and work together dynamically now therefore what we need is a lot of innovators so in the first year what we were able to do a pretty good job of was identifying some of the brightest talent in the country across the country we had uh, more than 400 applications it took us 8 months to go through those and the three sitting in front of you are the brightest of the brightest um now comes attracting industry right so um uh, one path is that these innovators themselves become industry the other is that is this whole diverse spectrum of people making evs or wanting to make evs so they buy stuff that our folks are innovating so a partnership between innovators and industry that's phase 2 money of course is is the great superset and money is coming very very fast into the eb space so money is not the challenge um, but design for manufacture design so that you are scalable globally meeting standards standards of safety standards of quality and uh, respectability so those are challenges that we are going to be working in uh, over the next couple of years so that by the time we are done the simple statement is india should be the global leader in knowledge and technology in the small ev space that's the evangelize journey in short and we do what it takes i mean down to making our own chips create your own chips create your own standards uh, i'll take 30 seconds and um, you know kind of take you to the mid 80s when there were a lot of personal computers being made you had sinclair zx spectrum you had zilog devices you had um, so many then ibm said we will lay down the standards for how a hard disk talks to a processor talks to a keyboard talks to a display unit and how do they connect how do they work and they made those standards open so now sitting in india if i were to make a keyboard i was confident that anyone in the world would be able to use it now that's the power of standardization that we are hoping to bring to this industry so that any innovator makes anything it will plug in and work smoothly with the rest of uh, the components once you do that then you've got this magic flash moment 
and uh, then the all the creative creativity and innovative powers of india will be unlocked and that's evangelize thanks anupam for describing that very ambitious vision and how you actually uh, operationalize that vision so let's turn now to some of the founders for specific examples of how they benefited from evangelize let's begin with varun uh, varun can you tell us about your experience of participating in evangelize and how did that help you bring your idea forward varun yeah so i think before i go into how evangelize help me i'll just tell you what uh, continuing from where mr anupam left off uh, so our particular product uh, we brought regenerative braking to bicycle sector which has uh, as far as i'm aware never been done in the world before um so if any one of you have ever ridden an electric car or an electric scooter which has regenerative braking you know when you go downhill uh, you can typically recover a bit of energy um and we are bringing that to bicycles uh, so like let's say if someone uh, and this particular innovation right it's very useful for cargo bicycles which is very uh, pro, uh, which is highly used in europe um so your the weight of these uh, bicycles are typically on the higher end somewhere around 150 200 kg uh so uh, your dhl fedex almost all your big uh, freight uh, logistics companies are already using cargo bikes to make deliveries and that's where we think we think this innovation is going to take a foot so basically our innovation we have managed to develop a motor which is lower cost uh, because we've eliminated some components uh, we've used lesser materials uh like overall like it's 300 grams lesser raw material in terms of aluminum steel so it's more sustainable like lesser mining required a lot of recycling can be done um and at the end of the day it still provides more range you know like this we still provide 4 to 5% more range to the end customer so it makes financial sense as well for them um in terms of i create i think the best part about i create has been the other companies that we have gotten to partner with uh so actually now we are doing uh, we are we partnered with an i create incubator company which manufactures bicycles and we're try, uh, trying out these motors with them you know like and i believe that you know all of us being startups like we need to collaborate in order to beat the giants uh your who have a lot of funding and backing behind them uh it's only that we work together and capture this market uh, and that's i think that's the best part about being part of i create and taking part in evangelize um gramot has been a bootstrapped company for the past 2 years and i was actually going to remain bootstrapped for the rest of however i i was going to uh, but the reason i took part in i create was i think they can provide something to me which can help me uh, go international you know like till now i've been um or more of a i've been more of a linear growth person and that's i create has helped me think exponentially so i think that's the biggest uh, uh, benefit of uh, i create and evangelize as such yeah so thanks varun that's a great message think exponential go exponential let's start to manuj now manuj in your case what kind of assistance have you received from i create and how important is scale in your journey manuj so first of all participating in evangelize has brought us a lot of humility in us in our approach because we have been able to part, uh, engage with i create with the mentors engage with the uh, peer startups which particip- participated in evangelize so we actually uh, got to see a lot of things what is happening and what has been happening in the ev space we even got to interact with industry leaders and actually saw first uh, like problems first time and incorporate them in our products and second is we have been able to bring a lot of credibility in web like being vetted by i create teams and uh, uh, fellow uh, participants uh, so th- that has uh, given us a lot of limelight and a lot of cred- credibility that people are able to trust us now uh, our customers are able to trust and we have seen a lot of traction uh, after evangelize and uh, talking about how important it is to scale up um, i still think uh, there is a lot of first mover advantage still even if you want to uh, uh, place chinese components in india and we want to uh, be uh, associated with associated with as many ev and battery pack manufacturers and uh, build a lot of trust in us because our products are designed in that way because that we, we even promise 10 times reliability and a lot of uh, agile features in our systems uh, that this is very important that we scale up very rapidly uh, so that uh, we become a top tier one supplier to indian ev ecosystem uh, at the same time we have to even uh, manage the chip prices which has been going on uh, so at the so that's why we have been partnering with semiconductor supplier 
ecosystem so that we are able to navigate this challenge uh, for next couple of years uh, for the time this crisis would be there thanks manoj uh, i'd like yeah. to ask each of you my last concluding question now first of all of course congrats for having won this grand challenge i'd like to ask you now each of you what are some of your next steps in your journey ahead and how will you take your innovation to the market how long before someone like me can access some of your innovations let's start with you akash yeah sure so uh, basically uh, as i mentioned earlier like we we have two set of technology one is the uh, one hour charging under one hour charging and the second is the 10 minutes charging so we are starting with the commercialization of this one hour charging battery technology uh, in the two wheeler three wheeler and the commercial vehicle space in india and uh, we are starting with some of the pilots uh, with the uh, renowned oems in the two wheeler and three wheeler space and uh, in the next 4 uh, to 6 months our products will be out on the field uh, in the two wheeler and three wheeler uh, customers some of the uh, key anchor customers which we are right now in doing the pilot with and we'll be starting a small uh, batch production of 600 battery packs a month uh, in the next 6 uh, months and uh, beyond that we will be scaling the business into like 2 300 megawatt hour of battery packs uh, by the end of next year so we are in discussion with some of the tier 1 venture capital firms in india to raise a seed institutional round to get through the uh, next phase of growth as we speak That's great, Akash. Good to hear you moving close towards your targets. In your case, Varun, what are some of your next steps, and how do you plan to take your innovation out there into the market, Varun? So, being in the bicycle space, we're ready to go today. So, uh, if if you come up to the bicycle now and you want to try out our, our new regenerative uh, motor system, we can uh, immediately give it to you. So, we are partnered with a one bicycle shop in Bangalore where. Uh, we are actively uh, converting uh, regular bicycles as well as uh, if you have an e-bike and you want to move to a regenerative system, we can convert it from today itself. Yeah, but in terms of B two B mass sales, so we have trials going on with five to six customers, and we have a small batch. Uh, we have orders of we have orders uh, coming in uh, from April onwards, uh, which we are fulfilling. so our line is already set up our factory is uh, ready to go for and we're ready to produce about 2000 numbers per month in terms of capacity yeah that's great varun looks like 2022 is off to a great start for you already how about you in your case manoj what are your plans targets for the year i guess and uh, how you plan to bring the innovation to the market uh, so uh, happily we have been vetted by our most of our customers which are renowned battery pack manufacturers and two wheeler manufacturers now and we have also started to get orders uh, from one top tier one battery pack uh, manufacturer who is supplying to a very around ev uh, two wheeler manufacturer so we are already getting attraction and now we are at a stage that uh, we are really raising a round uh, along with i create uh, so that we can uh, rapidly scale up to a uh, level that uh, we would be there in most of the evs uh, two wheeler and three wheeler in india right now Thanks, Manoj. It's great to hear how much traction our young startups here have already. To wrap up now, I'd like to ask Anupam. Anupam, how well do you think EV startups are doing today in India? What are some of the steps that we as India need to do to boost our startup ecosystem and reduce dependencies on global EV markets? Anupam, great question. Uh, definitely not an easy one to answer because off the cuff, uh, because of the boil in the market, you see so much vitality. Right? You've got people. Uh, launching new vehicles by the day you also keep hear- hearing those terrible stories of chip shortages uh, semiconductor shortages and long supply times so today we've got a problem of uh, massive demand and not enough capacity to make it and if you uh, were to ask for a uh, two wheeler four wheeler today i mean uh, it's it's definitely going to stress the system to uh, be able to meet it now um, to catch that there's a lot of startups which are also starting up to uh, to meet that demand now in in cells nobody can do anything uh, india does not make cells probably will take some time to gear up there so you import the cells but after that things are beginning to fall into place now we see in the battery management and the charging infra space a lot of dynamic work happening there are people who are setting up charging stations uh, on highways inside cities 
they're taking a gamble they're investing their own money or investors money and starting to create capacities those are very positive signs because if you don't have a petrol station why buy a petrol car right so that bit is beginning to fall into place there are companies like uh, ether others who are wanting to uh, install multiples of thousands of charging stations free of cost across uh, various cities so that that infra starts getting created and they're prepared to do it at their own cost right so that's happening on the battery management uh, so you must understand unpick these terms a little bit uh, you've got massive amount of computing happening inside an electric vehicle so to control your motor you need very powerful computers and clever software to control your batteries you need clever computers and software and those computers need to talk to each other and the charger so there's a lot of strengths that india already has in these domains right so we are playing to our areas of strengths so for us to be able to create that computing power and the firmware and the software for that is the art of the possible and so therefore we see a lot of startups starting up in those areas right as manoj said they are making full stack full stack basically means they're doing each and every component that goes into an electric vehicle and it's indigenous nothing imported except the chips the the ip the intellectual the brain power is all here uh, and they're not infringing on somebody else's patterns they're creating their own variants of the technology so that is a very good very healthy sign you know one of my pet peeves was that i grew up all of us grew up with bajaj scooters and the stepney would fall off because the stepney was hanging on a cantilever behind the scooter and the vibration would cause the stepney to fall off and 30 40 years 30 years that we drove that damn scooter the problem was never fixed at an engineering level my dad would get an angle iron fitted and then later i grew up to get that angle iron fitted and it would work but engineering solutions for that were not created in the ev space it's different engineering solutions are being created for the evs of the future in india and we aren't talking about the very clever stuff of image assisted driving right so you've got your assisted braking so if you anticipate a collision today we aren't allowed to actually break the vehicle but we can give alerts um, do interrupt me anytime you feel that i'm you know taking up too much time because huh? okay so um, we are talking about more advanced features like um, safety or autonomous driving there are a bunch of people who are already doing work in that uh, so whether it is the very very clever stuff on autonomous and connected driving or it is the basic nuts and bolts of what will make evs work i think it's a very vibrant ecosystem at this point in time in the country it's a good time to be in the ev space here thanks so much anupam that's indeed very well said it's a very good time to be in this space as the science and art of the possible is being created with that we come to the end of our discussion right now thanks anupam akash varun and manoj for this outstanding uh, discussion over here today i think three key takeaways for our audience would be the three e's excellence evangelization and ecosystem you have to have excellence you have to have engineering excellence design excellence in whatever you do in this space secondly there needs to be a lot of evangelization so that the whole uh, country all the value chains wake up to the potential of this technology and last but not least this is not possible without an ecosystem and that's what i create is doing a brilliant job of creating and orchestrating a whole ecosystem so that this ev manufacturing capabilities take off in india on that note thank you all very much uh, we, we wish you all the best in your individual journeys ahead thank you cheers thank you madam thank, thank you bye bye